With me, I have Robert Rees today. Welcome, Robert. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Arna. Nice to be here. It's my pleasure. I'm very happy to have you here live with me in the studio now because uh, we've been having some uh, Zoom talks. We've had a tournament, stuff right. like that. But now I can finally meet you in person and we can have the show Meet the Fritz Trainer, which is what we're talking about, a bit of about the life around Robert Rees. So you know, when you buy one of uh, Robert Rees Fritz trainers, this is the person who made <laughs> this Fritz trainer. Yeah. Now, starting with like a very random and normal question of all the questions. At one point, you probably learned how to play chess. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How did that happen? Do you remember the time? And e well, it, it, I, I remember very well. I was, um, I was playing a lot of football. And tennis, I was like uh, seven years, eight years old, and I started an after-school uh, course okay. at a primary school. And my mother um, said, oh, you should join as well. Your, your friends are going there. And I was like, no, no, I prefer my, my football. And then, uh, okay, she pushed me. I, uh, I decided to go, and I think uh, I was like seven, eight years old, and uh, mm -hmm. I became uh, number two in the school, like playing against like 12 years old uh, kids. And I thought, well... Let's go to a chess club. And so it started. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, well, in the chess club, uh, I, uh, I, one of my first tournaments, I played the regional championship of Amsterdam. I became second behind uh, one uh, friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went together to the Dutch championship uh, in the same age category. And, uh, well, then uh, I, uh, we became one and uh, two uh, again. My goodness. So okay. uh, that's how it uh, more or less started. And then you get more lessons, you go to more tournaments. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't say that my mother regret that she uh, uh, introduced me to chess, but uh, she was hoping for a different career. <laughs> but anyway, now, now she sees that uh, that I'm here with you, then probably it's all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hello to Robert Rees, mom, by the way. Nice to meet you too. Now, um, one of those things when you were learning chess in your childhood because of this let's say, coincidence or, or the thing happening. Um, it was probably, and this is what I hear a lot of times about strong chess players, was it very helpful and motivational that you won a lot of the chess games? Yeah, I think I'm driven by results. So uh -huh. I'm, uh, I'm very much on the result. And if I would have been pretty bad at it, probably I would have quit earlier. Gotcha, yeah. Uh, I like chess, but it's also because I'm relatively good at, uh, at it. So... Uh, I mean, of course, stronger players. But when you, as a child, you win prizes, you win, you come home with cups and medals. Certainly. Uh, yeah. And I also enjoyed it a lot. Like I made a lot of friends there, and the people I, I met 25 years ago, I'm, I'm still in touch with, uh, oh, with some of them. Okay. So that's, uh, that's, that's cool. Okay, that's nice. So, uh, since quite some time, you have the Fast and Furious show on Chess Space. Right. You've actually made, uh, surely over a hundred episodes. <laughs> Um, I've been counting a little bit earlier. Uh, why Fast and Furious and how did this show start? Can you give a little insight about this? Well, okay, uh, I got in touch with uh, with Pascal and we had some ideas. And uh, well, generally, I, I like sharp openings. I'm following chess and I think it's nice for the uh, for the public to, to see uh, interesting attacking play. Mm -hmm. I think most people are not interested in seeing top-level chess where you get very precise uh, play by, by, by both players and it turns out to be leading to an equal end game. Yeah. So uh, sometimes it needs to be a little bit incorrect. And uh, well, I try to follow top chess. I pick the most interesting games and well, every week there is something, uh, something new to, uh, to discuss. Yeah, I'm enjoying the show a lot, by the way, because of course you're, I'm, I'm kind of the person you're speaking to. I love the crazy openings and the attacking yeah. play and all of that. Now, what I sometimes wonder, because you've made so many episodes and you're talking, you're giving really good insight about the, the variations and, and all the different openings. Will there ever be a time where, is it, is it like every show where you go like, I'm out of openings, I'm out of variations? Or Well, the truth is that sometimes I, I'm, I'm not struggling to find new topics, but there are always new games. So it doesn't, uh -huh. if there's a new direction in the night or if there, there could be still something interesting gotcha. to, to talk about, or uh, sometimes you can even have a look at, at games from, from the past we, people are not yeah. familiar with. So, I, well, if it's up to me, I will go forever on with, uh, with, the, with the show. But no, for now, it's, it's, not, it's not a serious problem, of course. Mm. Um, how come you have such a passion for the different variations and especially openings are 
a theme which can be um, considered to be Robert Rees openings. That's something which is fitting very well together. Well, in general, I, I, I like to analyze a lot. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, for me, like uh, when I play tournaments, I, I like to play very serious. So I prepare my games uh, well mm -hmm. and I, I don't want to come to the board unprepared. So, yeah, when you when you study a lot, you you, you come across a lot of uh, games, not only the correct lines, but also a lot of rubbish lines you, you often see. <laughs> and, uh, well, sometimes uh, when something is bad, according to the machine, it doesn't have to be b bad from a practical point of view. So I'm, I'm always sort of collecting uh, material, mm -hmm. and that's how, well, generally it's, it's just fascinating to, to follow uh, the, the latest trends and uh, the, the, the old games, and I'm, I'm learning every day. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess it never stops. And since it, really, it, it never really does. So, yeah, uh, since there are, yeah, as you just mentioned, since there are uh, games played every day on the highest level, um, you probably always will find something which is interesting and new for you. Right. Talking about top level, so um, you're an international master. Your rating is around 2,468, something like this. Uh, exactly, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, now what I was wondering, because uh, there was like, if you see it with a lot of chess players, normally there is like a rating and then there is a dip down, a big dip. But yours is like steadily increasing. So my question is, of course, <laughs> do you ever have this little voice in the back of your head which says like, I want to get those 2,500, whatever it takes? Or is it something which like, I just want to enjoy chess? Or Well, at some point, I even made some bets with some, some friends. Is that so? And uh, that I would reach uh, 2,500 within one year. And then after one year, I, I went from 2,400 to 2,450. <gasps> but then just two bet tournaments, and uh, I dropped down again. Oh, right. You know, I, I, I should. And uh, I really want, but, uh, well, I need to find the time. I have a, I have a lovely wife. And uh, yeah, playing tournaments and of course studying chess as well. It's yeah. it's really time consuming. So um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, especially now in the in the pandemic, I, I don't know if I can play that many tournaments. But obviously, yeah, I'm uh, I, I haven't forgotten about it yet. So uh, <laughs> we, we, we will see. <laughs> will you announce the bet again, or is it just something private with you have with your well, best the, friends? I, I actually I I don't think what exactly the bet was about. It's just that I should. Uh, make it within uh, three years okay and i uh, terribly failed so, oh uh, well terribly no, no, we, we did it some years ago the the bet so okay, okay. Uh, the, the deadline has already passed but <laughs> who knows who knows uh, i'm open for new bets anyway so uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay here you go yeah. write it in the comments no yeah. don't do that but well of course yeah that yeah we have the coronavirus which is like uh, lasting since two years so that might be a bit difficult after all um, we will take a look at one of your absolute favorite games and we will have a little bit insight about this. But before we do this, I will just ask you a couple of more uh, short questions. Who is actually your favorite chess player, if you have one? Very difficult because mm -hmm. I, I appreciate different styles. Yeah. Uh, I like Magnus as a sportsman, of course. Uh, but now he's playing the World Championship match with, with Nepal. I should say that uh, I've played also, not against all of the best players in the world, but I've played once an official blitz tournament in Moscow against Nepal, Nepal oh. Miyachi. And he really impressed me the way he crushed me. <laughs> Like it, it, it was it, it was a king's gambit. I was playing with the black piece. He played a king's, king's gambit. King's gambit, also. I took, I took the pawn on f4. He played a couple of moves. He kept developing. I, uh, he played g3. I took the pawn. I took another pawn. He played king h1, so I was like three pawns up, and then suddenly we exchanged queens. And uh, I thought, well, I'm, I'm doing pretty well against yeah. him. Suddenly he traded queens, and uh, five moves later it was checkmate on move 25. And he ended the game with more time on the clock than we started with. Oh, this is this is harsh, and, yeah. And, 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 and <laughs> I, I've played against strong players, uh, Phil, far stronger than me. And yeah. I've lost many of them, of course. But this is one of the experiences which uh, <laughs> sticks in my mind. And I, I was really impressed by, by, the, by the way he, uh, he quickly spotted all these things. Uh -huh. And uh, it was not a theoretical line or so. He just played on intuition. He knew how to attack. So, well, that for me, that was one of... It was not a painful experience. I really enjoyed it. And I, I totally forgot how the game went because it was a blitz game. But the, the story is still very uh, strong in my mind. Oh boy, wow. Oh, that, yeah, that uh, can also be, yes, I heard that 
there are sometimes those games which you will probably never forget in your life because yeah. of yeah something well, like the that. Well, good, the good thing is that with uh, classical t uh, time control, you have sometimes painful experiences because it takes long. But this was just a Blitz game. True. Five minutes later, it was, it, it was just yes. over. And, uh, um, yeah, it, it, you, your recovery time is a bit quicker than with exactly, a long yeah. game where you spend a lot of preparation for this and then, yeah. It Especially now, downhill. looking back at that experience was one of my favorite uh, moments to, to play yeah. against him. Oh, that, yeah, that's that's that sounds very good, and well, we all know how he must feel right now. Kind of like that. That's also a bit tough, of course. Yeah, that's uh, incomparable. He's suffering a lot after this uh, dramatic uh, yeah. mistakes. Yeah. Well, um, do you have some favorite chess books? Uh, well, uh, I learned a lot from um, from the Foretsky books my, myself. Okay. And, uh, well, I, 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 I read a lot of opening books. I like the Kasparov books, but all I, even though I didn't study them that, that properly, but uh, like uh, for, for getting some general information on, uh, on the legendary players, it's all, always nice. Um, there's no particular book which uh, springs to mind okay. now, but uh, yeah, definitely I've, I've read all the classical uh, books myself. How many books do you have at home? Uh, well, I throw away some as well, but <laughs> no, but no, seriously, seriously, I, I, I do have quite a number of books. Um, no, no idea. Maybe 100, 200. Uh, Pre pretty nice, pretty yeah. nice amount of books. Yeah. yeah, I would say so. Now, my last question before we take a look at the game is what is at the moment your favorite opening as white? As white, poo. Uh, if you if you can share uh, the secret, well, I, I have no secrets for you. Either, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just between the two, you yeah, two yeah, and me. Yeah, don't yeah, worry, yeah, don't. Yeah, we, we'll take it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just, just. Uh, well, I'm I'm a, I'm a fan of the Scotch. I I, I like huh. the I like the Scotch. It's uh, well, like many openings, it's, it shouldn't be a problem for for black, but it can lead to to fun play and uh, well, yeah. somebody like uh, Nepo Miyachi has played it a lot himself mm -hmm. and uh, many other creative uh, players. Uh, so I, I I've I've been playing it a bit my uh, myself, but okay. uh, there there are so many interesting openings. I've I've played one d4 for a long period of time, but I realized oh, okay. that um, uh, one e4 better uh, fits with my uh, my style. So um, oh. let's uh, let's stick with one e4. And uh, now for black, the same answer. What is your favorite opening which you like to play as black? Uh, well, there's a simple answer. It's the uh, Sveshnikov. All right. Yes. As I, yes. I, I've written a book uh, about it. So uh, now that this is my, my favorite opening uh, since uh, my childhood. I, I, I played it a lot. I studied a lot. Um, at some point, I have to admit that I gave up playing it for a long period of time. Okay. And it was because I got tired of the anti-Sicilians uh, mainly. Uh, but uh -huh. um, it uh, is not a problem. And especially in the World Championship match of Carlson against uh, Caruana, there was the Sveshnikov was one of the uh, yes. most popular openings. And uh, well, since then... I started to analyze the, the the latest developments, and since uh, my my book has been published, yes, you you yeah you wrote a book about the Sveshnikov, and I also checked uh, from the Fast and Furious show the Sveshnikov, which you are also tackling in one of your episodes, is one of the most viewed episodes on our show. Funnily okay, okay. enough, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah, that's nice that is hear. a nice opening. All right, let's continue to take a look at the game and all the details around that. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, we switched uh, places quickly and we can see you are playing against Mr. Kevin Sprague at 2,633. Yes. And yeah. you had 2,403. Yeah. Tell us what tournament, what happened and all of that. Yeah. I mean, actually, I, I have many, many interesting games I, I played, but I, I, I like this particular experience because it was the seventh round of uh, the Gibraltar tournament. Nice. And uh, I, I think up to that point, I had quite a normal tournament. I, I won against the weaker players and I lost against um, the stronger ones. Uh, but this was the turning point in the in the tournament. Okay. As, uh, well, I played against the Mr. Spraggett and, uh, well, I came well prepared, I think. And, well, after this win, I uh, I won uh, two other games against 2,600 players. So oh, uh, I, I, ju I just missed out that on the Grandmaster Norm, which was, uh, which was a pity. But... Well, uh, anyway, Close good, enough. good good memories on uh, on this game. So Certainly, let me let, yeah. let me show you what um, what happened. Yeah, I played one d four at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so knight f six, c four, e six, 
Knight F3, and we go for the for the Queen's Indian. All right. Uh, G3, Bishop A6, all pretty uh, okay. pretty normal. And Queen C2 became actually a very popular move uh, back then. There are other moves like B3, Queen B3, uh, just yeah. different ways to protect the pawn. But Queen C2 is a nice uh, idea. Um, well, the bishop has done its job on um, on A6, so it goes back <laughs> to, to B7. Uh -huh. Bishop G2. And now uh, black goes uh, C5. And one of the ideas for black, it was considered... Uh, uh, that uh, now with the queen on uh, d1, you have less control over the d5 square. But nevertheless, I'm playing here to move d5. Okay. You say I don't care. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And, well, now, nowadays, this is well-known theory, and uh, sure. I, I, okay. I, got, I got inspired by uh, by it. But after ed5, cd5, uh, well, one of the ideas is that, let's say, if you take with the bishop, I would like to develop very quickly uh -huh. and then uh, occupy the center with uh, with my pawn, e4. Excellent. Get the bishop out, rook d1, castle kingside. White gets a tremendous uh, play. I love that, yeah. So he decided to take with the knight, which is the main move. And, uh, well, by far the most common move here for uh, for white is to uh, to castle. Yeah. And just try to uh, get some, like, long-term uh, compensation for the for the pawn. There are some developing issues on this uh, on this diagonal, some tactical yeah. ideas. But the move I played, it uh, it caught my opponent by, uh, by surprise. It was uh, kind of new uh, then. So I played uh, queen b3. Oh, yeah. And now you can see that I'm uh, I'm ready to uh, move my knight and exert uh, massive pressure against the uh, pawn on f7 as well as against the bishop on b7. Mm -hmm. So this is the point of playing queen b3. Um, he dropped back with the knight to uh, to c7. Uh, there are other moves as uh, as well. Knight f6 is uh, is quite a reasonable move yeah. uh, too. But let's not get into into detail there. Um, knight c7. And here I go, knight e5. Yeah, it looks as if this is working, right? Or not? Yeah, well, it's... Well, uh, yeah. Well, what? there's there's basically only one move to defend against the, the mating threat. It has to be, right? It has to be d5, otherwise wow. you uh, you lose the bishop. Yeah, well, well, certainly he was aware of that, but he yeah, thought yeah, this, is, this is still working like Yeah, this. But, but being unprepared for this, it's kind of unpleasant. You, I you, see. You, because you don't really know what's, uh, what's yeah, coming next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. And here I uh, I go knight c3. Okay. Uh, just looks like black has unpleasant uh, has stopped all the threats, but I don't um, know. <laughs> would you it, like to be black here? Or? No, no, definitely no, 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 not. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. I, I I will always prefer white here. I like this position a lot. Actually, it gives some nice pressure. You you built that up there. Exactly. Exactly. So well, he he played the most natural move, I I believe, to develop with uh, with gain of time. Yeah. Yes. Pl plays bishop uh, d6, and now. Uh, Probably the the move of the game. <laughs> it's uh, knight takes f7. Oh lord, beautiful. Well, that. How did he look when you made that move? Uh, was he surprised? Well, or? I, I think he was already down one hour on the clock or oh, so, and wow. I, I, I was still uh, still prepared here. Oh. And uh, well, one of the main ideas is that well, you you have to take uh, the knight. Yeah. I take with a knight on d5, and it should be clear that you cannot really take uh, everything piece, because yeah. at the end of the day, the, the rook is uh, still hanging in the in the corner. Looking good. And then you you will just just be an exchange up. So that's not possible. But now suddenly the d5 pawn is gone. Yeah. There are threats against uh, the king, and once you move the the knight, uh, also the the bishop can uh, potentially be hanging. Yeah. So yeah, the the main question is where where to go with uh, with the king and um, true. It's um, well, it's not so not so easy at all. If I remember well, I think if you go knight uh, to e6 to to block the check, I, I thought there are ideas based on uh, on knight f4, if I'm uh, not mistaken, or or even queen uh, queen f3. That so, is interesting. So on the next move, you can move your knight with with check yes. and uh, and take on um, on b seven. Because the king cannot move almost anywhere. Yeah, the king cannot move anywhere without a knight check. Beautiful. E exactly. Yeah. So, uh, well, he decided to go to to f eight, which uh, which looks reasonable. Yeah. But now another uh, shocker. Oh, I see. Uh, I think I, I can I guess. Is it yeah, yeah. the knight takes c7? 
Knight takes c7? Oh, it isn't. Oh, I well, thought... the, I, I understand your idea. You, yes. you wish that after bishop takes g2, but of course, there is knight e6 winning the queen. But of course, the queen takes back. And the then, queen takes back and then everything, everything is covered. Oh, yeah, that would have been a terrible mistake. Yeah, I saw it too, too pretty. So mm -hmm. it is, it has to be, you have to solve it for, for me. Yeah, so there, there is the move bishop g5. Oh. Gaining another tempo. And you, you prepared for this? Well, actually, I'm not sure if I was still in book here. I think I started thinking myself at, at some point. <laughs> But, um, well, the, the trick here is uh, I was familiar with some ideas. And if, even if you don't remember the exact position, uh, it's, it's such a big advantage compared to an opponent who is already swimming yes, uh, yes. in his uh, thoughts. So <laughs> let's say if you, if you take now uh, the knight, now I can take on c7 with the point that uh, if you take the bishop, That's there's not possible. An, another yeah. knight fork winning the, the queen. And, well, the difference is now that the, the queen has been deflected, so it's no longer able to recapture. And if you take back with the bishop... Well, then we will win a piece, right? Then you take on uh, on b7, and, uh, well, the rook is hanging, so yeah. you, you'll be in exchange up. Wow. Yeah, so you're Shockers. already... Uh, yeah, you're, you're already much time down on the clock, and then you face this move. It's, uh, oh, it's, that's uh, a killer move, it's, yeah. It's, it's a real killer, yeah. So, well, he... Got to move the queen, but also stay yeah. in touch with his uh, pieces on the queen side. Yeah. So he goes. He, yeah, he cannot take queen it. queen d seven. And um, well, there are there are quite a number of interesting options here. And don't forget, I'm still a piece down. Yeah. True. Um, but I'm far ahead in development. So I thought the most natural thing to do here is to bring a rook to the d file. Oh, so you're uh, long castling. I, I castled long, and I, That's I think so cool. Yeah, I, I like think it. I think objectively it's not even the, the best, but from practical point of view, yeah. I I really felt that I was going to win the game. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It yeah the the fear, of course, could be that it is too slow, maybe, and you have to keep up the pressure. But actually, you're doing this. First of all, you're saving you you're securing your king a bit better, and then you're. Get yeah, and and, and and who knows? Maybe my other rook could uh, could join play uh, faster yeah. as well as well. So I, I think that makes um, makes quite some sense. Mm -hmm. um, what is interesting to mention here is that okay, I maybe I, I spent ten fifteen minutes or twenty, I don't yeah. know, something like that. But next to me was a game of. Um, uh, Victor Korchnoi, and he had a French position. Uh, like all the all the pieces were still <laughs> on the board after a couple of hours of playing, and I could vis I could see from his expressions that he was not entirely entertained by his own game, <laughs> and he was looking at my game. It was no, but it's, 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 if, if such a player is sitting next to you uh, across the board, so you you, you can you can nice you can observe him. Yeah, it, it's it, <laughs> one of my favorite uh, chess moments. It's probably even nicer to see Korchnoi looking at your game like nonstop yeah. rather than uh, winning the game itself it's just the the fact that he was sitting there made it uh, made it special for me <laughs> right so um yeah I'm, i i i don't remember i i thought that there was still sort of a defensive for black but to be honest i cannot recall it's like such a long uh, long time ago yeah indeed yes. um but he uh, my opponent played a very natural move knight uh, knight c6 like you need to yeah. catch up with your development but it all comes uh, a little too slow because uh, now I'm looking for tricks on the d-file, but uh, I also need to combine it, of course, with threats against uh, the king. Yeah. And the critical move here is uh, queen f3. There it comes again, yeah. Which is the move I uh, I played. And suddenly you, you have a big problem because if you uh, decide to block the check, mm -hmm. um, I'm ready to exchange queens. Oh, this is come as a surprise, oh, but it's all tactical. Oh, I see it. Yeah, you, you didn't do my calculation training uh, DVD, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, well, you you got to take here, and then um, beautiful. You uh, you win back. Actually, you, you not only win back the piece, probably you win more material because uh, you're gonna win uh, something on this diagonal too. Yeah, that looks looks very good for for white. Absolutely right. So. Well, that's that's impossible. There are some other uh, king moves. My opponent played king e8, but king g8 is also interesting possibility. So, shall I give you another uh, chance here? What yeah, to, give what me to another do? chance, yeah, yeah. please. Okay. <laughs> so, for you at home, of course, too. Now is a chance to to uh, spot the correct uh, next move here. Oh, what can it be? Well, there's so many tempting things. Uh, I'm. I'm thinking, oh, no, this cannot be. Oh, there's so many things. Well, 
No, I think I would I would probably think too long about this position. I, I see so many options like bishop f6, knight f6, queen b3, uh, maybe just a rook lift. I don't know. I, I, I would have to calculate a lot look, here, I think. Always look at checks and captures. Okay. There are no good checks. I will help you. Yeah. But there's a good capture. Okay. As you can uh, take on uh, That on was C7. another option, yeah. You cannot take with a bishop because of the pin. Oh. And if you take with a queen... There's just a the check. There's another check. Okay. And you, you win the piece back. And uh, you are pulling up with an overwhelming advantage. Excellent, yes. All right, all right, all right. So... Um, Didn't get it, damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, in the end, uh, the king had to go to, uh, to E8. Uh -huh. And uh, now another uh, nice little move as I bring my queen uh, a bit closer. Cute. And I think the problem is that if you just go back, uh, I thought I could take again on C7. Mm-hmm. A queen takes, and now queen f5. Okay, yeah. Queen Basically, go in between. You win a piece again. It's, at it's, least it's exactly the same motive. Yes. As, as as after king g8, you have. Um, yeah, you could just take the bishop, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, you you can take uh, exactly the bishop. I wanted to play a queen e6, but this is much uh, simpler, of course. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's mate. So, um, yeah, this is the problem for black. He um, he cannot really move his king to a good square. King f7. It's the same story. Knight takes c7 followed by queen f5. Wow. Uh, and if you go queen e6, there is uh, uh. knight takes e7. <laughs> right. So What a massacre. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This was very pleasant experience. <laughs> and, well, he went knight e6. Uh -huh. And I actually came up with another uh, quite oh nice move here. Oh, my gosh, Robert. <laughs> Sorry, Arnie. <laughs> yeah, before, don't uh, worry, don't worry. I went uh, knight, oh uh, knight c7. Oh, my gosh. So he cannot take with the bishop, otherwise his queen falls and probably will have... Uh, right. He cannot take knight with the knight either. Yeah. Knight uh, cannot take because it's in check. Right. And if the queen takes, uh, we just take the knight. Beautiful. Take the knight. Uh, bishop is hanging again, so yeah. the only move here would be uh, bishop e7. But now it's time to uh, eliminate some uh, defenders. As uh, oh. as I can take with the bishop on uh, on c6. Oh, okay, I thought you would take the bishop on e7 first. Uh, well, there's no need to do that because the the bishop is pinned. Yeah. So I would rather take here. Okay. Uh, uh, I see your point. Like yes. you you want to go here, but and then I would like to take the knight. Yeah. Yes, but I take back with the knight. Oh here. my lord! Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. This is why uh, Robert is doing all of this and not me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> always think about the move orders. There are always differences. <laughs> Yeah, so well, I, I so took here, true, yeah. and you cannot take with the queen because of uh, mate, obviously. Yeah. And if you take back with uh, the bishop, now it's time to take with the bishop on uh, on e7. Excellent. And after queen takes, uh, it would be queen takes e6, and uh, yeah, this is pretty uh, pretty hopeless. That should be very very good for white. I think the queen is falling as the next piece or the or the rook. Yeah, the I think the main problem if uh, king f8, the, the rook is hanging. Yeah. And if you go king f7, I just can play uh, rook d7. Yeah. So, wow. Um, yeah, it doesn't happen every day that you uh, get such a miniature against, against a strong player. Against uh, such a strong player, yeah. What did he say after the match? Did he congratulate you? Or yeah, was yeah, he a sure, bit sure. Well, actually, it's I, I played him a couple of years uh, later in a in a, oh. in a GM tournament in the Netherlands, and uh, in that game I played actually one e4. And, oh. after, and after that game, he told me that actually I I, I think you're a better one e4 player than a one d4 player. <laughs> so, <laughs> which I, in a way he was probably right, but uh, after getting crushed in such style, I was not sure. It's uh, you probably if you ever meet again, please do not never play d4 again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would be very nice. Yeah. Okay, I don't want to be crushed like that again. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much for this insight. Well, yeah, that was it, Robert. Very good. And um, this is your Fritz trainer. So if you like Robert and if you like the Fritz trainers and the Fast and Furious show, go get some more Fritz trainers. Some more are coming up very soon. That much I can tell.